Seth Freakin' Rollins, and this is Brett Alive on YouTube. What is going on, guys? Brett Alive back with another video, and today we have the Week in Review episode 67 for you guys. Yes, guys, we're going to start off with Monday Night Raw like we always do. This is if you guys have never heard of the Week in Review setup, this is when we set up Raw and SmackDown for that certain week in a setup style. This is episode 67, so let's jump into it. Starting over here, Chris Jericho made an appearance. Kidding! But yes, guys, that is the brand new little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho available at ringside. Discount code live saves 10%. The review is on the channel if you guys want to check it out. But yeah, guys, getting into the Monday Night Raw part of things, no, Chris Jericho did not show up on Raw. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, it was Sheldon Benjamin. Bobby Lashley, an MVP, in a three-on-three -three match. And uh, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander come out. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And then they're like, we have another partner. I'm like, okay, probably going to be like maybe Apollo Crews, you know. But no, Mustafa Ali, baby, is back. Formerly on SmackDown. Now he is on, now he is on Monday Night Raw, baby. We got Mustafa Ali on Raw, and he made a big impact by pinning the so-called United States Champion MVP with a 450 off the top rope. One, two, three. Definitely my best, my favorite part of the show was this. Freaking Mustafa Ali's return. Uh, just so awesome, man. And I forgot to mention before this, uh, Sean Benjamin actually won the 24-7 championship from R-Truth, but who really cares about that? But yeah, Mustafa Ali's return was freaking awesome. Super hyped about that. That was awesome. Moving over here, main event of the show is Randy Orton versus The Big Show. Of course, they've been hyping this up over the past couple weeks. Uh, of course, because Randy Orton's been taking out a bunch of legends. Edge, Christian, and now The Big Show. Yes, Randy Orton took out the Big Show. He RKO'd him twice, and he hit a punt kick after the bell rang. He already won the match, and he hit the punt kick anyway. So, yeah, Randy Orton is so sadistic. He took out the Big Show in this match. I mean, it wasn't a half-bad match. It was just a little obvious that Randy Orton was going to beat the Big Show because, I mean, he's the legend killer. Why would they throw away this uh, gimmick that early? But, yeah, it was pretty obvious that he was going to win this one, and it wasn't a half-bad match. But, yeah, he did beat the Big Show, and the Big Show we probably won't see in a long time, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. Moving over here, it was Drew McIntyre who come out basically saying, who's my next opponent for SummerSlam? But no, he's like, uh, no, he was like, yeah, who's my next opponent for SummerSlam? And then boom, Dolph Ziggler comes out. He's like, it's definitely not you, Ziggler. I already beat you with your own stipulation. And I fully agree with Drew on this one. Dolph Ziggler got to choose the stipulation he wanted, and he still lost. It's insane. But yeah, Dolph Ziggler wanted another match, and this Monday on Raw, in episode 68 of the Week in Review, Dolph Ziggler will go up against Drew McIntyre in a match because Dolph Ziggler said, Drew, uh, anything, anything to give me a match, anything. You, what do you want to choose the stipulation? And Drew's like, sure, you got your match. So Drew's going to choose the stipulation this time, and he's not going to reveal until before the bell rings. So that's going to be next week on Raw, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, just like Dolph Ziggler got to choose the stipulation, now Drew can. That's super cool. Uh, moving over here was Kyrie Sane versus Bailey, and I was really surprised in the end of this one. Uh, Kyrie Sane actually picked up the victory with a reversal from the Bailey to Belly into a roll-up uh, submit, um, not submission, uh, pinning combination, but yeah, it was really cool, I'm like, dang, Kyrie Sane just won, they've been burying Kyrie Sane a little, like, she hasn't really be been getting anything lately, so I'm glad she just pinned the SmackDown as champion, pretty freaking cool, I was into that, uh, otherwise the match, you know, wasn't too bad, uh, but yeah, I was pretty into Kyrie Sane winning, moving over here, Ruby Riot versus Peyton Royce, and yeah, it used to be like Peyton, uh, it used to be, um, well, first I'll talk about the match, but yeah, Ruby Riot, Peyton Royce, in the end, Ruby Riot actually ended up picking up the victory, surprisingly, no Billy Kay on ringside, Peyton Royce says she, Billy Kay was handling some business elsewhere, I don't know what that's all about, uh, but yeah, Ruby Riot went up against Peyton Royce, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a half bad match, but if I remember right, Ruby Riot would like never lose, she would always win matches like, when she was with like the Riot Squad, and now her big thing's like losing matches, I don't even understand it, now she's a face, so weird, but yeah, uh, Ruby Riot did pick up the victory with the, uh, with the Riot kick to Peyton Royce, and she did pick up the victory as I said, moving over here, it was the Street Profits, the Raw Tag Team Champions, uh, Angel Dawkins and Montez Ford versus Angel Garza and Andrade in a pretty decent match. I mean, the match was okay. I, I wasn't really into the match all the way up until the end when Montez Ford jumped off that top rope. I, my mouth literally dropped. I'm like, oh my god. He just jumped like 
12 feet in the air, and he dropped down on Andrade. Or was it Andrew Garza? I'm not really sure. Uh, but yeah, he did an insane frog splash, and he turned around in midair, which was so freaking cool. Oh my gosh, Montez Ford, so talented. So is Andrew Dawkins. I, I really like their tag team. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, the match was kind of boring up until the end with the um, big frog splash. I thought that was really cool. Moving over here, it was the opening match of the show. It was actually Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black. Aleister Black basically saying, Seth Rollins, you're going to feel, you're going to be, um, you know, sorry for what you did, Ray Mysterio. Mysterio taking out his eye. Uh, but yeah, Aleister Black, you know, they honestly have been burying Aleister Black so hard lately. Uh, and yeah, Seth Rollins beat Aleister Black. And then they assaulted him outside of the ring. They took out his arm on the announcer's table. And then they just assaulted him, Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins. Uh, but yeah, Aleister Black needs to turn heel. Um, Seth Rollins needs to get rid of the Messiah thing. Uh, <laughs> but not, not fully get rid of it. I, I mean, I kind of like it. But then again, it gets boring a lot. But yeah, guys, that was Monday Night Raw. If I were to rate Raw this week, I'll give Raw a 6 out of 10. It was okay. Favorite part of the show is Mustafa Ali returning. Thought that was awesome. But yeah, guys, that was the Raw part of the video. Now, let's jump into SmackDown. Continuing the week in review with SmackDown, which was a pretty decent show. I thought it wasn't too bad, definitely. I would say better than Monday Night Raw. But uh, yeah, guys, this was SmackDown. And without further ado, we are going to jump right in. Starting over here, of course, as you guys know at Extreme Rules, Kofi Kingston got put through two tables by Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. And he's going to be out of action for six weeks. And they had this little promo backstage with Big E. And Kofi Kingston's like, you know what, Big E? Don't even don't even worry about the tag titles. It's time for you and it's time for you. It's time for Big E. It's about you and singles competition. So this is very interesting. So Xavier Woods is out, Kingston's out, and Kingston had the idea. It's like, you know what? Why not have Big E be a singles competitor? Never know. Let's see what Big E can do on his own. I love that. I think that's awesome. I'm so interested to see what they're going to do with Big E. I just think that's freaking awesome. I love that. Moving over here was actually Matt Riddle versus the premier athlete Tony Nice from 205 Live. And uh, th that match wasn't too bad. It was pretty obvious that uh, Matt Riddle was going to pick up the victory. But uh, yeah, in the end, King Corbin was actually called out by Matt Riddle. And then Car Corbin actually ended up saying, I'm going to put basically a target on your head. So basically, Corbin's saying that anybody who could prove that Matt Riddle doesn't belong on SmackDown should try to take him out. And then Tony Nese, after Matt Riddle beat him, tried to storm Matt Riddle be uh, because, of course, his alliance with the King, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so uh, King Corbin put a target on the uh, Matt Riddle's head. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, the rivalry's not too bad. That moment, uh, that match with Matt, uh, with Tony Nese wasn't too bad against Matt Riddle. I mean, it was okay. Uh, but yeah, the moment with King Corbin was a little better. But yeah, that wasn't too bad. Moving over here is actually Miz TV, Miz and Morrison. Hey, hey, ho, ho. With special guest Naomi, which wasn't half bad. And of course, Miz and Morrison, they've done it before. They always bring out the arch rival like they did with... Uh, um, Oh, what Mandy Rose, and then they brought out Sonya Deville. They they're doing it again this time with Naomi, and then they're like, okay, we have a special guest, and Lacey Evans comes out. I'm like, oh my gosh, Miss Morrison, they keep on doing this. They're such idiots. But uh, yeah, uh, this wasn't too bad, of course. Naomi w lost last week against uh, Lacey Evans. The entire thing is was basically she got like super viral viral on Twitter for losing against uh, Lacey Evans, and Lacey Evans just brought that up. Like, how could you go viral for losing and all this random crap? And then yeah, it ended up with an all out battle. Naomi ended up getting the upper advantage by by staying in the ring, knocking all the makeup around the face of Lacey Evans, and that was a pretty decent moment on Miz TV. As always, Miz TV ends up in an all out brawl. Moving over here, this was interesting, man. So it started off with Sasha Banks and Bailey out here at the beginning of the show. Nikki Cross come out. I'm like, okay, I'm in, you know, I'm into this. Nikki Cross is coming out, probably going to ask for another opportunity. And Bailey's like, okay, you got your opportunity. You know, you got your opportunity for the SmackDown title, but you have to beat Alexa Bliss. That's Nikki Cross's best friend. So it was Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Cross. The winner faces Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship next week on SmackDown. And I'm like, whoa, this is interesting. This is awesome. So that match happened. Nikki Cross ended up picking the victory which was very surprising to me, but they could be hyping up a heel turn from Alexa Bliss to take out Nikki Cross. I see that coming with some jealousy if Nikki Cross picks up the title. But uh, yeah, I'm really into that. I think that's absolutely awesome. And yeah, they are going to have a match, Bailey versus uh, Nikki Cross next week on SmackDown. That's going to be pretty freaking cool. Moving over here, it was actually a fatal four-way. Grandma Dalik, Lindsay Dorado, Shorty G, as well as, oh my gosh, why am I, Drew Gulak. In a fatal four-way match, winner faces AJ Styles for the Intercontinental Championship next week on SmackDown Live. That was interesting. I'm like, whoa, these participants are pretty interesting. You had Shorty G, Lucha House Party, and um, freaking 
Drew Gulak. I was like, this is kind of interesting. Who's winning this match? I thought I thought maybe, you know, Shorty G, you know, I thought Shorty G had picked it up, but no. Grand Metalik. How interesting is that? Grand Metalik picked up the victory and he's going to be facing Styles next week. And Styles came in the ring. He's like, all right, I'm going to show a little respect. He put out his hand for Grand Metalik. Grand Metalik didn't shake it, at least in the time that Styles wanted him to. Styles slapped him across the face. Grand Metalik returned with another slap and then he ended up hitting him with a tornado or DDT to get him out of the ring. And then Grand Metalik stood tall. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. He's definitely not picking up the title. I, I could guarantee you that. Oh, but yeah, that should be a kick butt match next week. Oh, that's going to be actually really good. Grand Metalik versus Styles next week that'll be kick butt dude best match of the night right here the bar or should i say the burr fight this was so good you guys could let me know your opinions down in the comments down below but i thought this was awesome jeff hardy versus sheamus in a bar fight and as the name suggested it was a bar fight they were in a friggin bar they were smashing glasses over their heads they took it into the bathroom. They, Jeff Hardy's head got stuck into a urinal. Freaking disgusting. Then Sheamus turned it on. Absolutely insane. Sheamus got sent onto a toilet. Ladders were used. Glasses, wine, beer was everywhere. Through tables, through drums. Such an amazing match. You guys had to have seen it for yourself. But in the end, Sheamus actually had Jeff Hardy down in this exact position that you see Sheamus in. With the hat over his face. And uh, it was looking pretty bleak for Jeff Hardy. I'm like, eh, Jeff probably not going to win. But yeah, he had the hat over his face. Sheamus went to go finish him off and then took the hat off his face and then boom the face paint appeared because he didn't have face paint on his oh, face the entire match so that I was like oh my god that's so awesome it looked pretty similar to that and then that's where Sheamus was just starstruck and then Jeff Hardy took advantage he climbed up the top of the ladder swanton bomb onto the cement floor to Sheamus put the hat on his face and then freaking walked out but what an amazing match you guys had to have seen it for yourself I just thought it was so freaking awesome let's get a view on Jeff holy guys look at that that is so sick, man. That is just sick, dude. But yeah, guys. And one more thing, if Mattel, if you're watching this, the Sheamus attire that he was wearing with the white um, tank top and the overalls and the pants, that figure would be super sick, just saying. But uh, yeah, guys, that was SmackDown. Favorite match was definitely the bar fight. In the end, I'm going to give this SmackDown an 8 out of 10. The bar fight really helped with that rating. Trust me, it would not be getting an 8 out of 10 if it wasn't for the bar fight. I was really into Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss as well. This, I am so interested as well. That is so cool. But yeah, guys, otherwise, pretty solid SmackDown. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's interview setup. Let me know your guys' ratings down in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bredo Live. Uh, out.